In this video, we're going to discuss assertions that management makes about account balances at the end of a fiscal period. So let's start with existence. You want to know if you're the auditor, do the assets, the liabilities, and the equity accounts that are on the company's balance sheet, do they actually exist? For example, if you look at the balance sheet and you see, oh, ending balance of inventory, $100 million. A valid question is, does this inventory even exist? Management is obviously asserting that yes, the inventory exists, it has an ending balance of $100 million, but your job as the auditor is to verify, okay, is there even any inventory in existence? Is that inventory actually exist or is this just fictitious? Now, with respect to the assertion about rights and obligations, management is not only asserting that, okay, this inventory exists, they're also saying that they have the rights, the legal title to that inventory. So you want to know, does the company hold the rights to the assets that it claims to have on the balance sheet? Okay, the obligations, are those truly the obligations of this specific entity? Okay, the liabilities. Now, when we look at specifics, so let's take a building. Okay, so let's say the building. Uh, there was a case years ago where basically the manager uh, took the auditors to this building and said, hey, here's our office building. We're on this floor. And they took them in the elevator up to this floor and it was under construction. And they said, yeah, here's our here's our building. We're working on it and so forth. It turns out that they did not even they didn't even own that building. They had no rights to that building. Okay, the building existed. But they had no legal right. It wasn't that they didn't own the floor of that building or anything. Uh, I think they had just like rented it out for the day just to like con the auditors. So the auditors want to say, okay, wait a minute. Do, do you actually have legal title to this building? Or if you don't have legal title and you don't own the building, do you have a, a long-term lease agreement here? Are you leasing the building uh, for an extended period of time where you'd have to capitalize it, right? So basically, do you have the rights uh, to, to use these assets, okay? Accuracy, valuation, and allocation. This assertion has to do with when we look at the assets, the liabilities, the equity accounts, are they at the correct amount? Okay, is this the appropriate amount? And if there's any valuation adjustments, have they been made? So let's go back to the example of inventory. Remember that inventory, uh, so inventory per, per US gap, uh, it's valued at lower cost or net realizable value. Uh, unless the company uses LIFO or the retail inventory method, uh, then it can use lower cost or market. But the general rule is lower cost or net realizable value Okay, for US gap. So that inventory, if you look at the balance sheet and it says ending balance, uh, $40 million. Th th there's an assertion being made here that, okay, this is valued at lower cost or net realizable value. That's the assertion that management is making. But wait a minute, has there been a valuation adjustment? Did they actually go and say, well, what is the net realizable value of that inventory? And is it lower than the cost? Or maybe they didn't do that, right? And it's the auditor's job uh, to, to find out. So classification, we look at these assets, the liabilities, the, the equity accounts. Okay, have they been put in the correct account? For example, a, a simple example is if we just look at debt. So let's say the company owes money to a lender and we want to know, is, is this going to be a current liability or is it going to be a long-term liability? You might say, well, who cares? Is, is it really that important? Yes, the classification is very important, right? Because the current liability, you're expecting, okay, the debt is going to become due soon. They're going to have to, they're going to, have to pay this soon. It's going to affect things like the current ratio and so forth in terms of looking at the liquidity of this company uh, in the short term. So investors care. They, so it's a big deal of something classified as a current liability or a long-term liability. Long-term, you say, well, it's, you know, they owe this money, but it's not going to be due anytime soon. So classification, when, when management puts something in a current liability, you're assuming, okay, this is going to come due within one year or the, the length of the operating cycle, whichever is longer. And it's the auditor's job to go and say, okay, let's, let's test this assertion and see if that's actually true. Now, the presentation assertion, what, what basically management is saying here is that the, the asset liability accounts, and so, they've been appropriately aggregated or disaggregated and clearly described in any disclosures are easy for an investor to understand. Remember, what, what value do the financial statements have and the notes the financial statements have if an investor can't look at them and understand what the heck is going on? So if we take, for example, the property plant and equipment account, so you'll see the ending balance in a property, plant, and equipment account. It'll be in the balance sheet, right? So you have the balance sheet and it'll say property, plant, and equipment. And then also it, there will typically be a note, 
right? So it could be note five, note seven, note eight, whatever. It has to do with property plan equipment. It provides more detail, right? To make it's relevant information and easily understandable, such as, okay, of this PPE, how much is buildings? How much is equipment? How much is company vehicles, furniture? There are a lot of different types of property, plant, and equipment. So it could break it out in the notes and say, here's what's in this, this ending balance of property, plant, equipment. Let's say it's $100 million. Here's how that $100 million breaks down. And then it would specify how much there is accumulated depreciation. Remember, that's a contra asset account that's going to be subtracted uh, from the PP&E. So it could specify the amount of accumulated depreciation. And it could go a step further and say, here's the depreciation method. Uh, we, we are depreciating our assets on straight line basis or so forth. So you've got these disclosures and make it very clear and understandable for the investor of, oh, what's going on with the, the ending balance of this PP&E account? What does it include? What's it comprised of?